Hello and welcome to today's lesson. Uh, first of all, you have a starter questions below. Um, please write your answers in full sentences. Um, your first uh, question there being what four conditions are needed to help yeast wake up for it to work in bread. So think about those past bread lessons that we've had and what does yeast need to help wake that up. Um, and uh, challenge with that, can you name this process? The other one um, being what kind of foods are described as having visible fats? Now take that word literally, what does visible mean? And then even looking at that steak, can you um, describe what kind of foods are described as having visible fats? And the challenge below is why do we describe them as having visible fats? I'm pretty sure I've given you uh, quite a few clues in that one. Um, and then how many nutrients can you name? So think of those nutrients. So you're in, with the um, lesson being food and nutrition. Uh, the nutrients can you name? Think of that eat well guide or that um, the, the uh, picture below with the fruit and veg and the dairy and uh, meats and um, the starchy uh, breads and pastas and so on name those nutrients can you name them and why do we need them that is your starter questions below pause the video and answer the questions and then come back so today's lesson uh the learning objectives being um that we're looking at time plans so time planning um specifically for a chili con carne um in that we'll also be um, identifying different stages of planning, preparing, cooking and presenting a chili con carne. Um, and some of you will be able to cook this chili con carne and use the time plan that you devise within this lesson to help rearrange and decide, decide what works and what doesn't. Um, and being able to evaluate from that time plan whether your time plan works, whether the, the way that you've written it works for others, then you can pass it on to someone else and say, I bet if you follow this time plan, it will work um, for you for this chili con carne um, every single time. So this is an interesting video where they are serving every day 40,000 people. Let's check it out. Sounds like when 3,500 people are eating together. And another 3,500, and another. In total today, the Shirdi Sai Baba Temple in Maharashtra, India will serve lunch to at least 40,000 people for free. And this happens every day, 365 days a year. The temple was built in 2008 around a specific philosophy by spiritual leader Sai Baba. Baba ye chahte the ki har ek aadmi ko khana milna chahiye, paisa ho usko, pani milna chahiye. This is the man in charge. Mera naam Sanjay Lakshman Kumbar hai. Mera main prasadalay mein supervisor ki assistant se kaam karta hu. He supervises the kitchen or mega kitchen as this is one of the largest in Asia. The day, it starts at 6.30 in the morning. Some people are cooking vegetables, some clean utensils, some are responsible for the bread. You get it. Every day, the meal is different, but the ratio is always the same. To make these plates for 40,000 people a day, it takes a lot of food. Here are the numbers. 3.3 tons of bread, two tons of vegetables, nearly one ton of lentils, and half a ton of dessert. Now, to make all this food, the kitchen requires a lot of power. The roof is covered in solar panels. So it's clear this temple's initiatives are something to be proud of.
So isn't that amazing? So the reason why we showed that video is that if um, anything were to go wrong within the cooking process or if anything was left out, if there was no planning after that, um, well, during and after and all the planning that went into all that food, something will go majorly wrong and someone is not going to eat. 40,000 people is a lot of people to feed. And if something were to go wrong um, in the planning, it could all go wrong for um, people wanting to eat. So in order for a chef to um, cook his dishes and be ready for service on time, um, it needs to be prepared and cooked on time and within reason. So food, if food is prepared and cooked too early um, or too late, the quality either way will deteriorate of the food, will deteriorate the food. It may be, caught, may be cold, maybe too hot um, and so on. Lovely bit of Gordon Ramsay there. Um, and these examples here of how food can just be rushed or mismanaged. So there you've got broccoli and I think it's mash um, and some steak, but it's just it doesn't doesn't look good. There's no presentation really to it. Um, undercooked burger. Um, I don't know what that is. Uh, undercooked chicken. And again, something with beans. I do not know what they have put with that. But what I'm trying to um, give you a visual here is without planning, and without due process, um, you're going to end up with dishes that look like that, which we do not want in food. And no one wants to really eat something like that at the end of the day. So what is a time plan? A time plan is a set of instructions for you and others in order to prepare, cook and serve food consistently. So in order to ensure food is cooked and served promptly, good time planning is essential. What we're saying here is that what goes into the planning um, for foods and when they are being cooked um, is essential in terms of restaurants, um, even cooking at home. Um, you just want to, if you just want nice meals, it's always good to put that planning in there. Um, a good example of this right now is using recipe books. You look at recipe books, open that up. That's essentially a time plan that has been devised so there is fail safe. It's using all the elements of a time plan within a recipe so that then you are that has been handed down so that some other people and yourself can cook that meal without it, fingers crossed, going wrong. Uh, there is an attachment for your time plans um, on Show My Homework. So if you have a printer, print them off. Otherwise, you're more than welcome, or I would advise, sorry, to draw three columns um, on your time planning sheets, which I will show you. Um, how that's going to work. There are three columns. There is time, order of work and special points. Why do we need a time plan in food and nutrition? So a time plan is used to ensure that you are organized so that when you're cooking these recipes, um, these recipes then can be cooked by um, on your by yourself or um, again and again and again without them going wrong and by someone else. Um, and the main points in a time plan are that each stage preparing to present the dish are in chronological order, meaning that it's in the right time frame. So it's going from, it's, it's running in real time. So chronological, yeah. So it's going from uh, nine o'clock, 901, 902, 903, etc. Uh, the timings from each stage of the dish is important. Uh, food safety notes for when storing, preparing, cooking, presenting your dish. Um, and general kitchen knowledge is also involved in a time plan. So explaining, for example, the process of fermentation when making bread. So how does that yeast work? So not only to show that you understand how that works, but showing someone else um, who might not have too much of an idea. You're then saying to them, this is how you do it. This is how it works. This is a GCSE time plan example. Um, so this is what you would be doing. Um, or gearing up towards in GCSE food and nutrition when you do your three course meal, uh, depending on the criteria that you're given. Uh, so your first column, I'm just going to reiterate with the with the columns. So the, the time area, um, time column is uh, should indicate the beginning to the end of the dish or dishes being made and how long that dish takes to make. So it's usually best to start on the hour. Uh, rather than use a random time because that makes it harder to, to work with. So what I mean there is either start at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock or, you know, 
nine thirty, whatever, but don't make it too hard for yourself. For example, they they've started this um, type plan started at ten o'clock. Then they got to ten fifteen. They got to ten twenty, ten twenty five, ten thirty five. So it's quite a simple uh, time plan. So they're not going into ten forty eight and three seconds. Yeah. So keeping it you know tidy ish, uh, but in in good order. Let's say. Um, speaking of order, this is your second column. So your order of work. Um, and this is the method part within the recipe that shows, explains how, what you're doing. Um, so it's kind of like you're talking about it, but you're not going into too much detail. It's like a method. Um, it's like a method within a recipe. Um, and it's a good indicator of how you understand the stages of your working. So how well are you working and how often are you cleaning? Um, how often are you setting up other equipment for other projects that are happening within um, the recipe? So, for example, let's start with our first one. Time, 10 o'clock. Uh, order of work. Here we've got mise en place, which um, is getting ready. It's you're getting your, in, your washing vegetables, you're getting things ready at 10 o'clock. Everything's being done in that sense. Then at 10.15, straight in there, this person's making bread. So straight away, they're making bread at 10.15 after they've had a bit of... Um, so at 10 o'clock, they've uh, got things ready. 10.15, they're making the bread. 10.20 washing up and cleaning the work surfaces. You can see with where they're making the bread, it's not going into, this is how much flour I use, this is how much salt I use. It's not the whole recipe in there. It's just giving a quick overview of how to make, how they you know, made that first part of the bread. Then 10.25, they've gone through all these, so I kind of rushed away there with the times, but you can see there, they've not gone into the whole recipe. They're just going through little bits and pieces of bread cleaned down then I went then they went on to the pastry then they've done the pasta 10:40 they're cleaning up again 10:50 back to the bread 10:55 back to the pastry and the last column is health and safety and there's special points so these special points relate to personal hygiene and safety food hygiene and safety equipment safety and then to that food science so explaining how for example again um, explaining how yeast would work during uh, bread making. So with them making bread, here we go. So here's an example. 10 o'clock, they started. Order of work, getting things ready. And in the, so for the third column, they've put, right, well, check my apron, check that I've spray, um, sprayed ba bacterial spray on the surfaces. Um, what shopping board did they use? How have I stored my food? Is it in the fridge? Is it in the freezer? Is the oven on, etc. So again, time, order of work, they're onto the bread, health and safety, or special points, they've put, they've used warm water, so not to kill the yeast. So they understand how yeast works within bread. So they're saying, I've used warm water, they've used food science right there. And then they've covered it with oiled cling film and left in a, to prove in a warm area. So to get that yeast going, so it's showing that they understand all those areas of bread and they've, um, they've they've started it well. So at 10:20, washed up their clean surfaces. So here your three different columns showing. So as it goes, your three different columns showing this process of how it works, and this is how you're going to do it with your chili con carne. Uh, the first thing you should start with all the time in a time plan is the mise en place. Um, this basic uh, term basically means just setting up, getting ready. And at the beginning there, at the sorry, at the bottom here, right at the beginning at 10 o'clock when they started with this time plan, they've got mise en place, washing the vegetables, weighing out equipment, uh, weighing out ingredients, sorry, um, uh, getting tins ready, lining tins, peeling, chopping vegetables, fruits, whatever. This is the mise en place. This is where it all starts. So it's getting ready. Um, and again, with uh, the health and safety and special points, is the fridge on, is the oven on, um, is everything sprayed down, bacterial spray to um, eliminate um, back to the bacteria and the potential um, cross-contamination that can happen and so on. So the importance of health and safety and special points, uh, just as in examples, uh, sanitizing knives, chopping boards after preparing raw chicken to prevent cross-contamination, high risk stored in fridges, um, 
get the uh, the um, temperature ranges in there as well for extra um, extra knowledge. Get get it in there. So fridges naught degrees to five degrees is a is a typical temperature for a fridge. Um, and hob setting, so whether you're working with gas, whether you're working with electricity, um, let it be known. Um, tell the user, tell yourself, like, this is this is what works best. And you can always change it as, as your time plan goes on. Um, another thing, dovetailing, just a quick one. So dovetailing means to fit together um, a variety of different stages into a plan. Um, within food, it's more to do with multitasking is the best way to put it. And especially when dovetailing within a, um, a time plan. So for example, if you look at the top on the right, you've got dish one, dish two, and dish three, and they're all different colors. And then you look down at the, um, the time plan that they've written there, you can see the colors in there. So dish one um, is the green one, but they've, they've made the bread for their basil bread rolls for their minestrone soup. And then they've, they've cleaned down a little bit and then they've gone on to their um, pastry for their um, tortellini. So they're making their pasta. Um, and then so the pasta um, goes on with the caramelized fig and honey tarts. So you can see how they're working in terms of dovetailing. It's basically multitasking and putting it into your um, time plan. And Last but not least, some helpful hints for your time plan. So this should help you a little bit of what we look for when we're in class, but because you're at home, um, it might look a little bit different in terms of um, whether you're using HOB6, whether you're using gas, are you, again, are you using gas, are you using electricity? Maybe you've got different um, equipment there. Um, the timings there as well, if you look down the time column, they're a little bit, close together, aren't they? So try and keep it like in the fives um, and the tens and so on. So nine o'clock, 9.05, maybe go to 9.10 um, instead of 9.07. Do you see what I mean? So you're keeping it nice and simple and keeping it to that chili con carne, making sure those three, three columns are in there and then hopefully going away and making it by yourself using your time plan and then um, changing it where needs be to make it even better. Um, thank you very much, Year 8. Let me know how it goes. Send those pictures in. Send me your time plans by the end of the day and anything else you need. It's all on show my homework um, for you to get back to me. Thank you very much.